So let's see how many of these five common serve mistakes you are making on your serve. Mistake number one, using a forehand grip. You do not want to use a forehand grip on your serve. It has a very low ceiling. You can learn to play very quickly, but you're not gonna maximize your level of play at all. You're not gonna see players using forehand grips on the Pro Tours hitting their best serves. If you're someone who has a very fast first serve, but then when the ball goes just out, then you have to tap your second serve. It's because of the grip that you're currently using. Another indicator that you're using a forehand grip is that you're beginning your serve with your strings pointing down, or worse yet, bouncing the ball with your racket like this. If you're someone who this is the beginning of your serve and the strings are facing down, it's a forehand grip. So what we wanna use is a continental. Base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad on panel number two and what you can do to encourage yourself to make that change is to change where your racket face is pointing. So rather than having your strings facing down, have your strings facing slightly up. So since I'm right-handed, my strings are gonna face slightly up to the left. That promotes using a continental grip. And then when I actually have this grip, then I can learn a side spin serve. I can learn to curve the ball. Rather than going flat into the back of the ball, because of this grip, I can actually hit some side spin, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So no more forehand grip. You're gonna use a continental, and you're gonna begin with the racket face slightly open. Mistake number two. This is a common one, and a lot of players don't even know they're making it, so make sure you go out and film yourself hitting serves and review the video to make sure you're not making this mistake. Mistake number two is bending the knees before you toss. You should be tossing, then bending the knees. If you are bending your knees before you toss, there's no benefit to your knee bend whatsoever. What you want to do is toss so that as your racket is coming up toward the top of your head, like knocking off a birthday hat, that's when the knee bend is occurring. We want to go down and explode up, and we want to explode up as the racket's dropping down behind us. That's not gonna happen if we're bending before we ever toss the ball. I do a lot of Zoom lessons for players. I, specifically, I do 11 Zoom lessons per week uh, for players all around the world. This is where they send me videos of their serves, forehands, backhands, their match strategy, and I sit down with them on Zoom live, and we talk, and we strategize, and we analyze their technique next to the pros. I'm surprised how often players bend their knees before they release the ball. Even players who've been playing tennis for two decades, they don't even realize they're making this mistake. When you adjust the timing of your knee bend, you can increase dramatically your racket speed. And then you can allocate that racket speed toward making the ball curve, making the ball go fast, doing both, just like Pete Sampras. So the serve should look like this. It's toss, then bend. Got it? All right. Number three, and this is a common, I'll, I'll serve on this side. This is a common mistake. The waiter's tray, right? The first thing to get rid of the waiter's tray is the mentality of no more flat serves. So when players go into the waiter's tray where their strings face the sky, if you ask them, hey, what type of serve are you trying to hit? They'll typically say either, I'm not trying to hit any type of serve, or I'm just trying to hit a flat serve, right? I'm just trying to smack into the back of the ball. That's because they're trying to have their strings face up so that their strings then face forward. Again, makes sense. What's in your best interest is to learn how to bring the racket around on its edge. So yes, we wanna knock off the birthday hat as you've seen me make so many videos on TikTok and, and Instagram and here on YouTube. We've talked about knocking off the birthday hat, but we have to make sure that we're coming up with the edge of the racket. So start purposely hitting side spin. Now, here's what typically happens when players first work on hitting side spin. If they're right-handed, they tend to hit the ball way over there. And the reason is they're used to swinging toward the target. You don't wanna swing toward your target when you're hitting spin. Just like when you hit forehands, you're swinging up, right? So I don't want the ball to go over the fence. I'm not trying to hit the ball up high into the air, but I'm gonna swing up because the direction I swing is what's gonna put spin on the ball. If I want the ball to curve to the right, I'm gonna swing to the left. Watch this. I swing to the left and look at the ball, curve to the right. If I want the ball to curve left, I swing to the right. Watch the ball curve left. The ball always curves the opposite direction I swing. So what I want to do 
if I'm right-handed, the ball's gonna curve left. I have to swing to the right. So when I swing to the right, that's when you can see the ball curve to the left. And so now the ball will curve. And it's great on the deuce side, because then you can curve the ball out wide, right? So don't swing towards your target when you bring the racket around on edge. You've got your grip, you're gonna toss and bend as we've talked about, and now we wanna lead up with the edge of the racket, but don't swing towards your target. Swinging towards your target is when you've got the forehand grip and you're trying to go flat towards your target. When you've got the continental grip, your strings will face towards your target, but you swing to the right and that's what's gonna make that ball curve. So you have to make sure no more waiter's tray, you lead up with the edge of the racket. Even when you're hitting your flat serves, your flat serves, the ball should still have side spin. It's just not gonna have as much side spin. Think of it that way. Mistake number three, no pronation. Big, big mistake. If you want to hit powerful kick serves, slice serves, and flat serves, you should pronate when you're hitting all three of those serves. And I don't care if you're hitting to the T, if you're hitting out wide. I recently watched a very famous coach on YouTube talking about how, you know, you come up here and then you can go like this or you can go like this. I was literally speechless as I was watching this video thinking, you have got to be kidding me. I, I, we're, this isn't 1972 where people don't have video footage. The pros are not curling and, and supinating around the ball. It, it just doesn't happen. You don't go around the ball to hit a slice serve. I, I was just, I, I couldn't believe it, but I'm not gonna say who it was. All right, so you, you're gonna pronate on every single serve. So here's how it's gonna work. Players in the, in the comment section, by the way, in the last few days have asked, how do you pronate and hit slice? It seems counterintuitive. Let me, let me get a little closer to the camera and, and get you to understand this. First off, pronation is this move right here. It's palm facing towards you and then palm facing away from you. You could think thumb down, thumb down, right? Thumb down, thumb down. It's a natural move that happens. If you hurt your hand, you go, ow. You're like, oh my gosh, I just, hurt. I just slammed my fingers in a drawer and you go like this, right? That move is the fastest way to move your hand. So when you make that move, you're gonna move the racket very fast. This means that my strings are facing off to the left as a right-hander, and then they face off to the right when I'm done. So how do you hit a ball with side spin or flat or kick serve, whatever? It's all about when you hit the ball. Let's say this is zero and this is 180, right? This on edge position we just talked about. This is zero, this is 180. Well, when is contact? Is contact at 90? Is, is contact at 93? Is the contact at 80? I'm talking about degrees. Where along this path is contact? Contact is before 90. That's what you want to think of it as. That you're at zero, and then when you get to the ball, that the, if you're right-handed, the right edge is still slightly in front, where this is square against the back of the ball and square to the court. You want to think of it as the right edge, if you're right-handed, is still slightly in front. So think of it as 85. You're contacting at 85 degrees. Here is zero, here is 90, here is 180. Here the strings are facing left, here the strings are facing to the right. You are going to be rotating and you contact the ball with the right edge slightly in front of the left edge. And if you're swinging off to the right as a right-hander, that's gonna produce the difference between where the strings are pointing and where the racket's traveling. Now, when you're pronating, the ball doesn't know that you're pronating. The ball's only on the strings for three milliseconds, four milliseconds. So because of that, there's no rotation that's occurring. It's not like you make contact like this, and then when you turn, then the ball lets go of the strings. There's, that's, that's not the kind of dwell time that you got on your strings. I don't care what tension you have. So when you're rotating and then you hit, the ball's already gone. By the, with the, by the time you even feel it, the ball's way gone. And then you keep rotating. The ball doesn't know that you were pronating. The ball only knows where your strings were facing, and the direction your racket was traveling and the spin it should have. What players get confused on for, as a right-hander, I'll demonstrate it, is they think, wait, how am I hitting on this side of the ball, yet getting the ball to curve this way? That's not what happens. You are 
on edge, zero degrees, 10 degrees, 20, 30, 45, right? All the way, and there's 85, and there's my contact. After I hit the ball, then my racket squares to 90, then keeps going 135 and then 180, right? So we're still gonna have the right edge as a right-hander in front slightly when I hit the ball. That's what's gonna be putting side spin. But I'm pronating so because I'm really loose and my racket's gonna be traveling really fast making that move. So I'm gonna be hitting with speed and getting the control from the spin. What I see a lot of players do is they will come up on edge, they'll hit the ball, and then they'll finish, and I should say, they'll continue with their strings facing to the left as a right-hander. It looks like this. I'm gonna try my best to do it. And they do that, and they keep their strings facing to the left. That's not what you want. This is what it should look like. Your string should face off to the right. Strings facing to the right as a right-hander. Strings to the right. I'm trying to stop there. It's a little uncomfortable to do that, but I'm stopping there so that you can see it. Strings facing to the right. I'm gonna bend my elbow. I'm someone who, I'm not super flexible, so it actually helps me to bend my elbow, the, the, the Sampras elbow, in order to get better pronation. That's better. So the strings facing off to the right when I'm done, but notice the ball didn't go to the right. The ball didn't go to the left. I'm rotating, making contact, and continuing. Now you might say, well, why do I have to continue? Why are my strings, why is it important that my strings face off to the right? Like what, the ball's already gone. Well, if this is the finish line of a race, why doesn't Usain Bolt just stop on the finish line? Why the need to continue running? The, the race is over, why continue running? Because if, if momentum keeps going, Right, so body motion tends to stay motion. So as you're rotating the forearm, you don't wanna be stopping and slamming on the brakes, inhibiting that pronation. Just like a golfer, a golfer follows through. Why? The ball's already gone. What's the point of the follow through? It's because of all of that acceleration and speed. It's not easy to slow down. So as you're making this move and turning the forearm to snap the racket into contact, the racket will, if you're loose enough, just continue making that move. But when you contacted the ball, the right edge as a righty is slightly in front of the left edge. As a lefty, it's the same thing. Here's on edge, your racket turns, there's contact. The left edge is slightly in front. Then after I hit, then my racket squares up to the court. And then it keeps moving and my strings face off to the left. Again, that was if you're left-handed. The last thing, all about, the, the, the last mistake, is throwing this left arm back. This is something that I am just astounded with, that coaches are teaching students to throw that left arm back or the tossing arm back behind them. And you see this so often. And you see this left arm back like this. Can you hit good serves with that? Of course you can. I just did. You're not going to hit your best serves. And when it comes to who you are and who you want to be, sometimes the littlest detail can make all the difference. Here's what happens, or here's what should happen. When you serve, it is not in your best interest to be rotating as you hit the ball. You don't want your body turning like this, which is typically what you see coaches having their students put their tossing hand behind them because it's cool looking, and I swear to you, it is one of the reasons why juniors do it. They love the look of having that arm stick way back. It's become a very cool thing. Another thing that you'll hear people say is, well, Ryan, it's about balance. What kind of serve are we trying to just hold like this? We're not trying to hold our balance on a serve. It's not important that we hold our balance on the serve. The moment we serve, we're out of our serve. Like we, the ball's coming back. This isn't golf where we hit and we hold and we just watch it go. The ball's coming back. We need to get out of our serve and into a ready position. So this is what should happen. And it's called a power X. I want you to hug yourself. Just finish with your arms crossed. One of the ways to increase racket speed is to, when we rotate, remember we're turned and then we're uncoiling, we want to stop the body. When we stop the body, that's when the hitting arm accelerates. 
we are not going to accelerate by just twisting. Imagine I have a whip, right? Like, right? I've got a whip in my hand. If I just start spinning, is that whip ever going to snap? No chance. The whip is going to snap when it all moves forward and then I stop. And when I stop the handle, the end gets and actually breaks the sound barrier. And that's the, like on a bull whip, that's the, the crack that you hear. So what we want is to rotate. And then when we're rotating, if we pull this tossing arm back in against our body, that accelerates the hitting arm faster than if we're just turning. And that's why the X occurs. You look at Nadal. Nadal, I would say, is the best example of what you should do on the Pro Tour with the finish. Now, you'll see Roddick would have his arm tucked in like this. You see Dominic team. But when they're done, they go and they quick throw their arm back. What's nice about Nadal is he just keeps it there. He doesn't move it. Where a lot of players are fooled by the fact that the serve goes like this, the arm tucks in, they serve, they slow their body down, and then the arm goes back. And all this is for show, I swear to you. It's important that if you film yourself from the back, that your tossing hand waves to the camera. So here I am hugging myself. I might have just been hitting my microphone, so I apologize for that. But the tossing hand is actually waving to the opponent, or I'm sorry, to the camera behind you. So this is what I, I have people do. I have them serve and just wave to the camera. Now there are three things you want to do. Toss, reach out toward the opponent, then wave to the camera. Toss, reach out. That was good. And then wave. You don't want to be rotating as you hit the ball and you'll hit your best serves. Mistake number one, using the wrong grip. Get a continental grip, begin with your racket face slightly open. Number two, bending and then tossing. We don't want to bend the knees and then toss. It's toss, then bend. Number three, the waiter's tray. Get it in your mind that you're going to be hitting slice serves, side spin serves. Even your fastest serves, your flat serves. The ball, it, it's not like the ball has no spin. It's not like you should see Wilson Trinity going toward your opponent or on the camera. It's, it's not no spin. It's going to have spin. Use side spin even on your flat serves. Number four is if you are going palm up and making this move palm down, having your strings not pronating, or you are pronating a little bit and then after trying to supinate and carve around the ball, don't. If you're right-handed, your string should face to the left, and then as you're hitting, and after you're done, they rotate and then your strings face off to the right. And as a lefty, obviously, it's the reverse. And last, hitting and waving to the camera this way. Don't wave to the camera on your tossing side. Wave to the camera on your hitting side and hug yourself. Now, if you're excited to use these tips against people in your local area, in matches, in practice, or even find a coach who can help you eliminate these five serve mistakes, then use my link in the description, playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. And when you use my link, you get 50% off when you join. If you avoid these five common serve mistakes, there is no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from twominutetennis.net. You got this.